Welcome everyone to a very special edition of AEW Dark. Tony Schiavone along with the one and only Dasha Gonzalez. How are you today? I'm doing fabulous and fantastical See, today. I know Thank you, you for asking. You always are. <laughs> we are very excited about Full Gear tomorrow night in Baltimore and on pay-per-view. That's right. I can't wait to see what is about to go down because history is going to happen. Cody and Jericho for the AEW Championship. We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. But right now, kicking off dark this evening, we will see Sheeta coming off her impressive AEW Dynamite victory against a young woman who made her AEW Dark debut last week, Big Swole. We got Golden Boy out here. We got Excalibur out here. What do you say? We bring out one more. And her opponent from Kanagawa, Japan, Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida made her AEW Dynamite debut last week, where she defeated Shauna in a very hard fought contest in Charleston, West Virginia. And now she looks to keep the momentum going here tonight on Dark. Think about how big of a win this will be for her car, Sheena. Let's not forget that she went up against Riho for that number one contenders match for the AEW Women's Championship. That Riho went on to win against Nyla Rose. If Hikaru Shida can get back in the winning ways here, just like she did last week, this could be fantastic for her. But on the other side, you have to wonder if Big Swole can pick up a massive victory here tonight. That'll be game changing. Our momentum is so important for a professional wrestler. I mean, can you give us some insight on what a victory here would mean for either competitor in their hunt for a championship? Well, sometimes you have to stop the bleeding. And you gotta do it right away because things have a tendency to roll downhill. So both of these ladies, this needs to be a big win and get the, get the bleeding stopped and get their careers turned around and heading around the right path. We will see if Big Swole or Hikaru Shida is able to prevail here in Charlotte. By God, North Carolina referee Paul Turner gets the proceedings underway. You know what, I, I like both of these women in the ring right now. They have so much talent. This right here, building blocks for AEW. The talent that you see here, this is what it's all about. And Hikaru Shida with the experience and speed advantage, but much like our broadcast colleague, Double A, Big Swole, with the power advantage. <laughs> are you saying I wasn't quick? <laughs> no, I say you were, you were powerful, but, you know, you, you were, were quick in your own way. I wasn't that You're quick. quick when you needed to be. I wasn't that quick as a cat. cat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you made up for it with your incredible prowess and strength. I think it's all right, you know? Prowess. I'm not, I'm not strong nor fast, so I think <laughs> you, you were, you're basically winning in every way. 
I like that prowess. That's a good one. I might have to look that up when I leave here. I'm <laughs> digging it. Busted out the uh, Rolodex, you know, of, of words. Or more the, the dictionary. Yeah. The, the source. Uh, there you go. He has all the words. Side headlock there by Big Swole. We saw the clean break after the Colin Elbow tie-up. But Hikaru Shida firing in with some shots to the midsection. Sends Swole off the rope. Shoulder tackle. There's the power advantage. But there's the agility shown off by Shida. Arn, you've done a couple kip-ups in your time, right? Oh. I, I thought about it. Okay. That's okay. It, it, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> it never seemed to come to fruition, but uh, hey, there's always tomorrow. There, there truly is. There truly is. We, we saw you uh, back in All Out, how quick you were in the ring. Put the spine on the pine. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nobody would have thought that Oh, look possible. at this. Leapfrog caught by Hikaru Shida. Showing a little bit of her own strength here, but Big Swole once again just getting just a little bit of the better out of uh, Hikaru Shida here. Yeah, fought her way out of it. Now Shida rolls through into the drop to hold. Dropping Swole face first, and the drop kick to the jaw to follow it up. She actually caught Swole with the heel of the boot instead of the toe. I mean, that's that's a considerable, a considerable impact to the face. That's a course corrector for sure. You know, she needed to just end that momentum that Big Swole was starting to build up upon. Hikaru Shida has so much experience. When you think about oh, how, oh, 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 man, how many matches Hikaru Shida has been in in her career. It was something over like 1,200 matches that she's been in. Yeah. I think that that speaks to the experience, that, that ring knowledge that she has that not a lot of women in AEW have, and dare I say, might be unmatched. Definitely one of, the, one of the more longer tenured competitors here in AEW. We've seen Hikaru Shida employ the chair as a launch pad before. She likes to fly in with that big knee strike. Oh. Right on the money to Big Swole. And she's just done and stunned. Big Swole has no idea where she is right now. It's okay. It's okay. You're in Charlotte. Take another look at the action here as Hikaru Shida returning Big Swole into the ring. And Look at how Sheeta just launches herself off of that chair, the point of the knee on the chin. And Big Swole, double A, is, she needs a, she needs a, I don't know what she needs, but she needs something here. She hopes to counteract this offense by Hikaru Sheeta. Well, she needs to say a prayer and then get her ass rolling is what she needs to do <laughs> before it's too late. Yeah, and that's the problem, right? This momentum can continue to build for Hikaru Sheeta. The crowd, they're cheering for her, but so they are for Swole as well. Yeah. Clearly, the AEW fans here, they want to see a fantastic match. And Swole, she has to ride that momentum. She has to be able to use the energy that the fans are giving her to get back into this. And you can see how she's trying to turn her body to alter the positioning of that single leg crab. She's trying to alleviate the pressure off of her lower back and her knee, but Sheeta doing a good job of hanging on, at least for the moment, as Swole able to use those powerful legs. Oh, rolls right back into it and gets possession of the leg yet again. Now, Sheeta looking for crap. Oh, look at this. Swole with those up kicks from the bottom. <sighs> Just a stop to the midsection from Hikaru Sheeta. <sighs> and big Swole in dire straits here. This is certainly not looking good here yeah, for Big Swole. Hikaru Sheeta has been dominant. And Arn, there's a psychological aspect to that as well. I mean, there's the physical toll, the beating that she's taking, but also the mental toll of just having, getting worked over like she is. Absolutely, I'm telling you, when you get this deep into a match, you need a Cover momentum. one, two, only a two count there for Hikaru Shida. You need a momentum switch. You need something to go full circle. If you don't, this is going to be over here in just a second. Yeah, and what, what could that possibly be here for Big Swole? We know she has the power. She needs to try and leverage that. This match has gone on for a little while, and Hikaru Shida continues to beat away at her little by little, just taking the energy out of Big Swole. She needs to have something big, a big change maneuver that is going to pretty much alter the complexion of this matchup, Arn. She needs to get angry. And it looks like she might be with those rapid fire shots, that high roundhouse kick, one for the sweep. Oh, oh what to the jaw! That's what I'm talking about. Now turn it up. Way to use your head there, that's for sure. Running uppercut, stun Sheeta back to center, Kazadora into, oh, oh the nice. Cover, hook of the leg, one, two, no! Oh, oh yeah, that was close. What, you like to say it's like a 2.9? At least. <laughs> 2.9 and a half. Okay, keep it rolling. Don't hesitate. This is the momentum shift that you were talking about, Art. And look at this, the hanging guillotine. Here's where the strength comes into play, guys. Right here. If you still got that, enough. That upper arm, that vice-like grip around the head, cutting off the blood flow to the brain of Hikaru Shida and forcing her to carry her body weight. But look at Whoa. that. Oh. Oh. oh, inside cradle. One, two, 
no, Sheeta able to kick out. Big Swole with the discus, went for that discus elbow strike. Sheeta had it scouted. Now up on the shoulders of the fireman's carry, Hikaru Sheeta has her up. Oh! Down into the back breaker. Hikaru Sheeta continuing to punish the lower back of Big Swole, trying to neutralize that power advantage. Nothing like bruising your kidneys to turn this thing back around. She was targeting that throughout the entirety of the matchup. A smart idea to go after that yet again. Right to the well, oh, but wait, for the oh, knee strike. Oh. Swole avoided one. Only a one count. Oh, a big pump kick. Swole, ripcord. Went for the lariat. Oh, went for the single leg, but Sheeta had it scouted. Caught her with that rising knee. One, two, no. Oh. Swole able to kick out. Swole's got a lot of fight left in her. But another knee strike like that could spell the end of the evening. I think it's been the dis difference of the whole match, those knee strikes. Incredible. In from all different angles. And this crowd here in Charlotte, North Carolina, 100% behind Hikaru Shida. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Lights That's be out. Shida, one, two, three. Picking up a huge victory here on AEW Dark. The winner of this match, Hikaru Shida. She's continuing her winning ways here, gentlemen. That's what's most important. Getting back into the title picture, looking and setting her sights on opponents such as Riho, the AEW Women's Champion. That was a big win for her car, Shida. Hell of a fight. Well, Arn, thank you very much for joining us here in the broadcast position. It's been my pleasure, guys. I enjoyed this. I love this arena. A lot of history. A lot of history and a lot of, lot of matches won, a lot of trips to the pay window for yourself, the enforcer, <laughs> and a trip to the pay window for Hikaru Shida. Oh, how does it feel to get such a big win over Big Swole? Ah, I won! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> ah, ah, yeah, I was so happy. Uh, I came here because for show Japanese style, and I think everyone like myself today, and uh, I'm really happy to show, <laughs> I'm really happy to show everyone Japanese style, yeah. Well, we have the, obviously a huge pay-per-view coming up this Saturday, and there's gonna be a big women's title match there with Riho, the AEW Women's Champion, facing your old teacher. Yeah, that's right. How, I mean, who do you have in this? Ah, that's so hard, Christian. <laughs> I, I think, I think Emi Sakura will win, yeah. I know both of them well, but I know Riha has so many techniques, but Emi Sakura always show her true power in big match. Yeah, so I think Emi Sakura will win, yeah. Well, congratulations again tonight, and thank you so much. <laughs> All right, what a great way to start out AEW Dark right before tomorrow night's full gear. And our next match is a women's tag team match featuring two women who were first seen in Chicago in the Casino Battle Royale as Shalandra Royal teams up with Shaza McKenzie, who will face the unlikely duo of the librarian Leva Bates and the beast Nyla Rose. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first, the team of Shalandra Royale and Shaza McKenzie. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Myself, Excalibur, joined here by Golden Boy and none other than the Kentucky gentleman himself, Chuck Taylor, sitting in on dark. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, I'm so excited. It's like an all-star showcase for Dark today, and I like that. It's all-star. You want to know why, Excalibur? Because I'm here. That's why. Wow. And I'm excited. Wow. <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, we have a great women's tag team match set to kick off. Well, set to be the second match here on Dark tonight. Hey, brother. As Shaza McKenzie making her non-battle royal debut, her, her tag team debut here in AEW. She teams up with Shalandra Royale.
their opponents first, the librarian, Leva Bates. Leva Bates giving the crowd here in Charlotte the business. And I don't know if you necessarily want to quiet down this crowd here in Charlotte. They have been electric all night. I think it'd be hard to get them to shut up. I think eventually she's getting through to them though, which is actually rather impressive. Or, or just them shushing her back perhaps. I, I haven't really quite made it out yet. Well, that is the hallmark of a, of a great educator, <laughs> getting through to a, to a tough audience. <laughs> Your cooperation is appreciated. And she will have perhaps the, the heaviest hitter in the women's division. Oh boy. As her partner. And her tag team partner from Washington, D.C. She is the native beast, Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose was so close to being able to call herself the AEW Women's World Champion, but Riho proved to be too much, and now Nyla Rose has been on a path to rebuild here in AEW. That's the scariest thing about this. You know, she clearly has basically a mission on her mind. Get back to the top of the mountain here at the AEW Women's Division. And honestly, if there's one woman who can do that, it's Nyla Rose. And Chuck, when you have a competitor that's so dedicated, so determined to get to the top of the mountain, you know you have to be careful for, of them. That'll be the most dangerous person in the division. Uh, someone who has been slighted uh, in their terms, and she's coming for that belt. And I wonder, this is actually a good situation for the librarian to find herself in because Leva Bates has pretty much been, you know, not the best runs here in AEW. And if she manages to tag along, if you will, uh, to Nyla Rose here, she could find herself in the win column today. Yeah, Leva Bates crazy. winless thus far here in all elite wrestling. And it's important to note that Nyla Rose did defeat Leva Bates a few weeks ago. Nyla demanded that this be a handicap match. She thought that she could take on both Shazza McKenzie and Shalandra Royal, and that would be enough to propel her back into the title picture. But the AEW manager would not allow her to compete in a handicap match, so they assigned Leva Bates as her tag team partner. I wonder how Nyla Rose is gonna utilize her tag team partner, Leva Bates, in this matchup. But let's not forget about the two opponents on the other side of the ring here. Right now, you have Shazza McKenzie, who currently, you know, she, she's a, a she's hilarious. I had a chance to speak to her in the back. She's a whippersnapper. She, and I, that is probably boomer talk for me there. Is that a technical term, Chuck? Whippersnapper? Whippersnapper, yeah. I think, I think it is. I yeah, think it is. Yeah, that's an Australian snap move. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shazza going for that kick to the outside thigh, but Nyla Rose just runs her over, and Shalandra Royale, I don't think she... She necessarily wants to face off with the native beast. Well, she's gonna have to, no choice here. Dropkick, oh. and it just forces Nyla to move a half step back. And we have seen no hint of emotion on the face of Nyla Rose, Chuck. No, not since she lost that match. Uh, uh, I forget when it was, but the, when she lost the title match. In she DC, went there, yeah. First but, episode of Dynamite. But I don't, I mean, there's no, there's no one that can stand toe to toe with her in the women's division. Yeah. If, if, she has one weakness. It is on the technical side. And you know in the past couple of weeks, she's been addressing that weakness. She's been caught by Riho in those pinning predicaments, those unorthodox Japanese roll-up. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, the old saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think she's recognized that she maybe was a little lax in her engagement with Leva, Riho. Leva Bates offering the tag, but Nyla opting not to tag in the librarian. Well, I guess that answers my question from earlier on. How she's going to utilize her tag partner? Uh, <laughs> not much. Not. Yeah. <laughs> now Shalanda Royal and Shazza McKenzie looking for a double suplex, but... Oh, no. Rose, what power! Valiant effort there by Shalandra and Shazza. But that power from Nyla Rose, you cannot take that for granted. Okay, okay. I, I give... I give uh, oh, oh, Leva! Inadvertent distraction there. As she, she was gesturing for the tag, and now Shalanda Royale, the 
Flatliner, oh, kick across the face by Shaza McKenzie. Caught it right across the jaw with that kick. Oh no, uh oh. The double hookup and the double choke slam. Nyla Rose planning both opponents. The native beast will not be denied. Now, credit there, by the way, to Shalandra, sorry, to Shalandra and Shaza for utilizing their speed, Chuck. That was the important thing. But that power from Nyla is insane. Absolutely. I was just thinking, can you get disqualified by not leaving the ring on a 10 count if it's just you getting your butt kicked the whole time? <laughs> can the ref throw that out? I think there's some leeway. Yeah. Yeah, referee Mike Posey allowing, uh, allowing some some extracurriculars as now Shaza sent into the post. And Nyla Rose, just a one-woman wrecking crew. I think at this point, Leva Bates has basically just been not his biggest fan. Fall away slam. Nyla sending Shalandra, and now Leva Bates might, might finally see some action. And no. That's what we like to call on the internet a debate. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Actually, throwing her to her own partner. I think she's fine making this a three on one handicap match. At the rate that it's going, I, oh, wouldn't <laughs> shock if it ends up that way. Shalandra Royal colliding with. Shaza McKenzie, and now look at Nyla just, oh. just muscling her into the ring. Ugh. Release German suplex. Not what can most. they do to, I mean, to, to stop the bleeding here? To it, I don't know. It seems like, correct me if I'm wrong here, fellas. You know, I mean, you know, Chuck, you've been in that ring so many times, right? So much experience, but it almost seems like Nyla's kind of sort of playing with her food here. Absolutely. You saw her toying with her, with her kicks that definitely hurt, but, you know, it's not her trying to end the match. She's, I think she's having fun. She's just out here to inflict as much punishment as possible. Yeah. And this is also a message. Oh, and picking up Shaza McKenzie. That is a message being sent to the AEW women's division. That's what we're looking at right here. She's able to take on two formidable competitors by herself. No need for a tag team partner. She wanted this to be a handicap match. Leva's just there chilling, reading a book. That's basically where she's at here. She's oh, and, and now forcing oh. Shaza to tag in Shalanda Royal. Shalanda Royal doesn't want any part of it. But unfortunately for her, she is the legal woman. Dragging her in by the hair over the top. Oh. Oh, nasty fall. And the running kick to the side of the head. Lights out for Shalandra Royal. Man, this has been pure domination from the native beast. Nyla Rose, dominance in this division for sure. Reminiscent of her performance in the Women's Casino Battle Royale. And now the Death Valley Driver. Hopefully this will be it. One. Two. No! Shaza McKenzie breaks up the pinfall. Shaza, why? I mean, I respect it. I, you have to respect it. But really, I mean, you're getting your butt kicked in this matchup. You you need to be, I mean, honestly, do, do you call it there? Do you say, like, I, I don't know if I should keep on going? Because this has been a one-woman wrecking crew this entire time here, Chuck. Yeah. But Shaza, I think these two, you know, maybe fighting for jobs, you know? They, oh! The kick to the face by our own partner. And now, oh, no. Double fireman's carry. Shal oh, Shaza and Shalandra just pancaked. Shaza McKenzie, so much heart, so much tenacity, but in the face of such a determined competitor, she has unable, been unable to withstand it, and now Nyla Rose. Oh, no. Oh, no. This, this can't happen. There's already been too much pain inflicted in this matchup. High risk, she's going to the top rope here, gentlemen. Oh, no. This might be as low risk as high risk gets. <laughs> Probably. Oh! No! Tomiko flattening both of her opponents. Nyla Rose, look at the intensity in her eyes. As now covers one, two, three, and that is it. Nyla Rose single-handedly defeating two very game opponents. Now the winners of this match, the team of Leva Bates and Nyla Rose. But hey, Leva gets a win. She's on the board here in All Elite Wrestling, courtesy of the Native Beast, Nyla Rose. Here with the Native Beast, Nyla Rose, victorious this evening with the librarian, Leva Bates, defeating Shalandra Royal and Shaza McKenzie. But Nyla, this was a tag team match. 
you never tagged in. Why? Because I didn't have to. Let me ask you a question. Did you see the casino battle royale at All Out? So you saw me in there. So you saw me throw out half of the competitors in that match. You see, from day one, I've been disrespected in this company. Does, is that reflected in my record? No, it's not. Not even one of the ten that I eliminated. So I'm going to start disrespecting everyone in this locker room one by one. Or in tonight's case, two by one. Why didn't I tag out tonight? Because I'm Nyla Rose, the native beast. This is the AEW Control Center, Tony Schiavone and Dasha Gonzalez. We are only one day away from full gear. It's tomorrow night, seven o'clock bell time from the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore. Here's the lineup coming your way from Royal Farms Arena. In the buy-in, it will be Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, getting her shot at revenge, going one-on-one -on -one against B. Priestley. That's right, the self-proclaimed chairman of AEW, Sean Spears, along with the legendary Tully Blanchard, will meet the bad boy, Joe Janela. And for the AEW World Tag Team Championship, the champions FCU will defend against the Lucha Brothers, and as we found out during Dynamite, Private Party. Rio will defend the AEW Women's Championship against Japanese legend Sakura. Will the ring be big enough to hold this one? John Moxley will face Kenny Omega in a lights out match. The rubber match between these two men, Hangman Adam Page squares off against the Bastard Pack. In tag team action, the Young Bucks will meet Santana and Ortiz of the Inner Circle. And for the AEW World Championship, the champion Chris Jericho will defend against Cody the American Nightmare. In addition, we'll have three championship caliber judges at ringside to rule on the match in case it goes to the 60 minute time limit. All right, this past Wednesday on AEW Dynamite on TNT, the American Nightmare Cody made this startling announcement. November 9th, this Saturday, I find myself on the marquee with our AEW World Champion, Chris, Chris Jericho. Jericho. If you humor me, I'm gonna go on a bit of a detour and rattle off a few names. Eddie Graham, Cowboy Bill Watts, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. All of them, titans in our business. They were the best bell to bell. For those who saw them with their own eyes, those memories reverberate in their heart. But for the cold and sterile historians of our business, there's an air of controversy that surrounds it. It's from the simple fact that those men were also, in addition to being competitors, they were management. Not unlike myself, when I hear the same criticism attached to my name for being management and being a title match, I can't not hear it. And with that said, if I do not defeat Chris Jericho at full gear, I will never challenge for the AEW World Championship again. Chris Jericho, that is a very big if. You've called me an entitled millennial bitch. I neglected to read about the upbringing you had that was so hard. You talked about my silver spoon. Gosh, it must have been so difficult being the upper class son of a famous hockey player. It is almost like we shared the exact same silver spoon, you stupid dick. You've dismissed every accomplishment I've made. The dirty secret is you need this generation more than it needs you. And you've surrounded yourself with impressionable youth. This isn't about my dad. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother, it's about my sister, it's about my wife, it's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. At full gear, I beat you. I become the world champion and you fall back into your inner circle and you let them know the ground should be rumbling between their feet because the elite are coming and we are going to eat you alive!
How about that announcement? I feel like Cody may have backed himself into a corner with that announcement. You may be right. We'll see what happens in Baltimore. Now, fans, if you want to join us live in Baltimore, get your tickets at AEWTix.com. It's also available on pay-per-view in the United States on BR Live, In Demand, DirecTV, and on all other pay-per-view providers. Also available on ITV box office in the UK and Ireland, and on Fight.TV internationally. Give me a reason A reason to live There's not any part of me that's gonna be in the ring that's an EVP. Every part of me is a kid with a chip on his shoulder who probably wanted to beat this guy 10 years ago and thought he could. Give me a reason I am Chris Jericho! The champion of AEW. As soon as Cody told me that he was going to challenge Jericho for the title, I knew we were just going to lose him for this period of time. No matter who thinks they're in charge around here, we're in charge now. Chris Jericho is professional wrestling. You hear the chance of Cody, he has this connection with the fans that is very rarely seen in pro wrestling. He is the face of this company. However, he's not the champion. Winning that championship belt, it would be the pinnacle of his career. for the AEW World Championship bout between the champion, Chris Jericho, and the challenger, the American Nightmare, Cody. This thing on? What's up, Cody? Hager, oh no! It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn-deniable! Jericho and Cody, what a war this is going to be. If I do not defeat Chris Jericho at full gear, I will never challenge for the AEW World Championship again. Chris Jericho, that is a very big if. At full gear, I beat you. All right, now for tonight's main event here on AEW Dark, a six-man tag team match. Super bad Kip Sabian teams up with a hybrid two to take on the World Tag Team Champions, Scorpio Sky and Frankie Gazarian, filling in for the injured Christopher Daniels, Japanese star, Shima. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first, at a total combined weight of 558 pounds, the team of Kip Sabian, Jack Evans, and Angelico. Kip Sabian teaming up with the Hybrid 2. Once again, we saw them last week on Dynamite take on the elite Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. They were defeated, though they were very, very impressive in defeat. Yeah, it was a valiant effort without a doubt, and you gotta give credit where credit is due. They went to the top of the mountain, they tried to take down the big dogs, didn't work out for them, but they still showed that they had it in them to be able to make an impact here in AEW. Yeah, these three 
weirdly fit together, actually. <laughs> this works. Kip Sabian feels like he's been criminally overlooked here by AEW management, as do TH2. And so they have found common cause and look to come away with a victory here tonight in your main event of AEW Dark. injury, but you couldn't ask for a better backup than the veteran, the legend known as Shima. This is a great trio, and I think that they're going to turn some heads in this matchup with their chemistry. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised. Yeah, like how do you replace a veteran like Christopher Daniels? You get another veteran in, in Shima, a guy who's been around just as long. Shima and Daniels have a very long history together. Shima, though a member of Stronghearts, almost an honorary member of SCU. It'll be interesting to see how they're able to gel together here tonight. SCU. I mean, that, that big title match tomorrow night it's in Baltimore has got to be weighing heavy on their mind, but they can't afford to look past the Hybrid 2 and Kip Sabian. And even though this is not a tag team match proper, it's a, a loss match, here. It's yeah. a trios match. A, a loss here to SCU could be detrimental to them. Right, you you do not want to go into the biggest AEW show of the year with, with, with full gear, defending those AEW World Tag Team Championships with a loss. You don't want that, Chuck. What, what do you think the mental state of SCU would be were they to be defeated here tonight, headed into full gear? Well, it's almost twofold. You know, you don't want to go in like you don't want to go in beat up and hurt. You want to come in fresh for your first defense of your tag team titles, but also you don't want to come in with a loss, like you were saying. So, you know, you gotta. You gotta pick and choose your battles. If you can't get it done early, you gotta you gotta weigh your options. Like, do you really want to push it to that next level, knowing you have that tag team title match coming? And now Shima and Angelico starting things off. Two men with a common maestro, Ultimo Dragon, the man responsible for Shima's training, his uh, his early days in this business, and the man responsible for convincing Angelico to leave South Africa to pursue. Lucha Libre in Mexico, wow. where, where he trained with both Negro Navarro and Skyda. Skyda, of course, a man that Chuck Taylor knows very well. That's right. Also, uh, my maestro for uh, many of my Lucha Libre classes. You know, and I think, uh, Chuck, you brought up a really good point about either ending the match early, like just getting out there and making it happen quickly, or, you know, if it drags on, you know, what do you end up doing? And I think that's when SCU admittedly has to rely on Shima a lot here. You need Shima to be the one that kind of drives and, and, and almost like controls the matchup here, but I see done there by Angelico to keep this one in control of the hybrid two and Kip Sabian. Yeah, Excalibur, as you were saying, Shima almost uh, uh, a member of SCU without being in it. You know, they're going to have that conversation before the before the match. Oh, sweep of the leg goes for the cover. Another sweep of the leg goes for the cover. Not even a one count from referee Bryce Remsburg. Shima. Sent to, uh, went to the ropes when Angelico cut him off right at the pass with that back elbow. Oh, ho, ho. thunderous drop kick from Shima. And now Shima with Angelico isolated, tags out for Frankie Kazarian. Kaz seeing his first action of the evening. Gotta be a little careful there. That tag went in when Bryce Ramsworth wasn't looking, but he did manage to catch it right at the tail end there. Here comes Jack Evans now into the ring. Nice arm drag there by the veteran, Frankie Kazarian. Deep arm drag, Kazarian holds on. Placing the knee, grinding it into the face of Jack Evans, slowing the pace down. Evans, such a dangerous high flyer, the best tactic Frankie Kazarian can, 
can opt for is to keep him grounded. Also a veteran, like he's been around forever. It's at least 15 years. You know, he's been around the world. He's been to Japan. He's been to Mexico. He's learned so many different styles. He is a high flyer and he is mostly a striker, but he's learned so many different things. Really, all, all the all the competitors in this matchup have just so much experience. The one I think with the least is, is uh, Kip Sabian, and he's clocking in at just under a decade of experience himself. So, oh, wow. Back heel kick there from Jack Evans has absolutely rattled Frank Kazarian. And now Kip Sabian with the quick tag in and a sledge to the spine. And you mentioned that experience of Kip Sabian. Sabian, of course, a product of the night wrestling school no, in Norfolk, England. The Fighting Knight family. Seems like Sabian has picked up a few aggressive notes from them. As he should, right? You're going to need it in a matchup like this. Catch people like Frankie Kazarian off guard. But well done, though. He's cutting off the ring, not allowing Frankie Kazarian to get any kind of offense. But just as I say that, I eat my own words. Here comes the veteran Kazarian. Putting together a three-hit combo there, flattening the young Sabian. Get a couple points for that one if it's uh, a little bit of Street Fighter, perhaps. And now Scorpio Sky over the top with a splash into a pinning predicament. Two! Only a two count. And Kip Sabian believes that he has been overlooked. He's the man that scored the first pin ever in all elite wrestling in singles competition. And thus far, one, two. Only a two count there from Sa uh, on Sabian from Frankie Kazarian. Thus far, Sabian's opportunities have been somewhat limited. He did dislocate that finger that kept him out of action for a couple weeks and kind of staunched his momentum. And I understand, though, why Kip Sabian feels the way he feels. But, oh. but the reality is, is that when you go out with an injury and there's and, and you have you know a huge moment to make a name for yourself with the community here at AEW. You know, things like that are going to set you back. Now, now that he's here, though, everyone has to take note. Kip Sabian, this guy is going to be a force in AEW if people aren't careful. And Chuck, you can speak to the, that frustration of being out for injury, being on the shelf, and then seeing, seeing your peers pass you by. Yeah, there's so many talented people on this roster, and if you miss a week or two, the next person's going to step up. Those back elbows from Scorpio Sky knocking Kip Sabian back into the corner. Bandera sends Sky up and over the top, but Sky blocks the punch, answers the right hand of his own. And now climbing up to the top, he's getting in the face. Oh, oh Sabian gouging the eyes of Scorpio Sky. Oh. And Evans with that pump kick to the face, taking Sky off the apron. It seemed like they had that one planned pretty well. I was just about to say that, Chuck, because this team is coming together, this trio is coming together. Yeah, I would say relatively uh, early here in, in, in the life of AEW. And for them to have that kind of chemistry this quickly, that is very impressive. And again, Kip Sabian doing a great job Muscling cutting off the ring. Over. Only a one count there. Yeah, so many talented guys, like you said, if you find your spot, if maybe he's gonna find his spot as this trio, this is how you're gonna keep getting on the shows. Well, Sabian and TH2 were so impressed by their performance against, uh, against the Elite on Dynamite that they decided to make this a, a going concern. They, they did the most important commitment a tag team can make. They started a WhatsApp group chat. Oh. <laughs> I have no. Oh. Man. Sabian takes Sky off his feet, hook of the far leg, one, two. We had two count there for Kip Sabian. That needed a face. Well, that would be a pretty good gift for the WhatsApp group, for sure. And then when you're as worldly as these three from all over the world, literally, you gotta, you gotta pick the free one so you don't have to, you don't wanna spend all that money. Double sledge to the spine by Angelico. And let's be honest, no one wants to start a Twitter deal. It's just, it's too much. It's too oh, much. <laughs> Double Irish whip into the, to the ropes. Kazarian reached for the tag with that tag rope. Whoa! Would not allow him to. <laughs> Jack Evans, prawn hold one, two. Two count. You saw Evans was actually flat footed on that prawn hold. He didn't have, he wasn't on his toes. He didn't have those legs pulled as far forward as he would have liked. And as weird as Jack Evans comes off on TV, he's even weirder in real life. Oh. <laughs> this is barely half a tremendous weirdo. <laughs> Jack Evans now setting Scorpio Sky face first into the turnbuckle. And this punishment may play a factor yeah. in that title match on full gear this Saturday night. Available on pay-per-view, in demand, direct TV, or wherever you get your pay-per-views. We are live, ITV box office in the UK and Ireland, Fight TV internationally. Hmm. 
numbers advantage, just getting too much of Scorpio Sky there. Yeah, and I was also going to point out that it's really smart here of of this team, Kip Sabian in the hybrid two, to be able to isolate Scorpio Sky like this. But it's also just so bad for Scorpio Sky to be taking this amount of punishment in this match when he has such a huge oh. match. Oh, just like that, right? You can't afford any of those, especially a guy like Sky who loves to take, no pun intended, to the skies. Yeah, he's going to feel that one on uh, on Saturday at the pay per view. Emphatic hammer throw into the corner by Kip Sabian. And you actually saw Angelico try to tag himself into this mat from the floor. He had his feet placed on the floor. Bryce Remsburg denying the tag as we get a great view of that step up Gaman Geary. And now Sabian, though, continuing to work on Scorpio Sky. Look at the far leg. One, two. Sky able to kick out. Great offense there by super bad Kip Sabian to keep this one in control for this trio. They've done a brilliant job thus far. If they keep on doing this, this is gonna spell disaster for SCU potentially at full gear. And then for this trio, this is awesome. This is why this trio came together to prove to everyone here, the AEW community, and on top of that themselves, that they belong at the top of the pack. A oh, knee lift there by Kip Sabian. Scorpio Sky though reversing the so Beautiful drop kick takes Sabian off his feet. And the window of opportunity has opened for Scorpio Sky. He's got to get there. He's got to get there. And Helico with the stop right there. That's and Helico. That's why we're the best. Oh, look at this. Scorpio Sky using those powerful legs to push off. And Helico now makes the tag up to Shima. She with a drop kick takes in Helico off his feet. Evans, the spring. Oh, oh, beautiful anti air there by Shima. I think uh, Jack Evans with that kick just ate his words. And, oh, look at the Shima. And Helico's hit the club. And now using the foot, too. Now the roll through. And, and Helico escapes oh. out the back door, but Shima counters with the knees. And now the oh. stop across the collarbones of. And Helico, now Shima, just taking out both, all three members of the competition. Uh, Venus Hammer Venus. there. Going for the Iconoclasm off the top row. Oh. <laughs> sending Evans into the pile. Not a care in the world, just send him over like the carcass he is. The 22 year old veteran going up to that rope there. Unbelievable. Oh. To the back of Jack Evans' head. Shima may never get the credit for being the innovator that he is. Shima with a tremendous series of offensive maneuvers there, but Angelico throwing the left jab, and now the backstabber by Shima. Great counter, hook of the near leg, one, two. Two count only, says referee Bryce Ramsburg. Jack Evans trying to get in there to save his teammate, but Angelico had a little bit more steam left in that engine, but boy, oh boy, he's gonna feel that one in the morning for sure. Shima has been on fire, and there you go, the right hand from Angelico trying to get some balance in this matchup. Vicious closed fist, right hand, right front of referee Bryce Remsburg. But oh, look at that tag team combination. That's Evans taking out SCU off the apron. And now, taking full advantage of the 10 count. 450 to the cover, one, two. No, Shima able to kick out. Deep cover there by Evans, but Sometimes doesn't have enough body weight to keep those shoulders down. He also lets his frustration get the better of him. He's got to get right back on the offense. He also never stops talking. <laughs> That's true. And Chuck, a lot of history between Shima and Jack Evans. Yeah, former tag team partners in uh, Dragon Gate in the Blood Generation faction. Oh, look at that! Oh! And Helico launched himself in over the top, but Kazarian hits it with that ace crusher. And now Shima. Oh, oh, Sherman suplex from the middle rope, avalanche style hook of the leg. One, two, now oh. Sabian breaks it up. He had to get involved on that one. That was a bad tumble there for Jack Evans. And also a very wise play there by Kip Sabian, dragging his teammate to the corner so he could bring himself in since he's the fresher man. And now telling Evans he, he's going to finish it. He's going to put away the veteran, the Super J Cup winner, Shima. Shima breaks free, ducks under the lane, and now tags out to Frankie Kazarian! Wow. What, I don't I... remember the last time I saw Frankie Kazarian do that. Oh, springboard dropkick, he is fired up! Now looking for SCU later! Bang! Oh. Right on the money! Shima tagged in! Up to the top! Miura! One, two, three! 
on Huge Victory for SCU and Shima. No uh, winners of this match. The team of Shima and SCU. What happens when you put three veterans together? You get success. That's exactly what we have here with Shima and SCU, your AEW World Tag Team Champions. And we hope you'll join us Saturday night on pay-per-view, Full Gear, Baltimore, Maryland, Royal Farms Arena. On Saturday, November 9th, John Moxley versus Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega the myth seems to think I'm some kind of joke. Are you ready to sacrifice it all? Cody versus Chris Jericho. The man continues to reinvent himself. There is nothing that Chris Jericho has that scares me. For the AEW World Championship. And the champion is going to celebrate with a little bit of the bubbly. All Elite Wrestling presents Full Gear. Live tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Pay-Per-View.